<laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is just have a little bit of a recap about what we're doing. So, um, basically, I sent you all an email just to tell you what was the, one of the best ways for you to um, keep going with this assignment. This is quite big, and obviously it's the, one of the first times we've asked you to do um, a very academic investigation. We've done lots of investigation, lots of design investigation, but this one is very academic, and so I think you needed some help uh, to make sure that you all go down the same road. So this is your Design Management 3 assignment. And um, some of the first questions that you should be asking yourself and some of the first things that you need to be addressing are these kinds of issues. So what's the subject of your investigation or your audit? Yeah. Uh, what are the macro and the micro factors? Uh, so you need to be thinking all the time about not only the context in which um, your uh, problem is set, so it might be within an organisation, it might be within a very specific field, but you also need to be thinking about the wider world, about the wider problems and how they impact on your particular problem. Okay? You need to have clearly defined objectives. And this is so that you can move through the project knowing what you're actually trying to investigate and hopefully work towards some sort of conclusion, some sort of solution. You need to have a think about what type of audit or what type of investigati uh, investigation you're conducting. And this is particularly true if you are doing a very specific kind of audit. So you might be doing a financial audit, you might be doing something specifically looking at research and development. And you need to have it very clearly in your mind. And also you need to understand why you're auditing, what's the point of this investigation. Okay? Uh, and then anything else which is particularly relevant to your your individual assignment, okay, your particular question, because obviously these things are very general and there may be an issue within your specific topic, your specific problem that you realise is, is a big thing and you need to address that. And if you've identified that kind of an issue, then make sure you have that in your mind through your investigation, keep coming back to that main point. Okay, okay. one of the other things that you need to remember is we are doing this from a design management perspective. And last week we looked at um, this kind of layering of um, different ways in which design management can exist within um, an organisation. So you could be looking at the physical man manifestations of design, specifically. You could also be looking at the way that design management is particularly used within an organisation. So that activity itself. You may be looking at something um, a bit broader, like the corporate culture, the identity corporate social responsibility, those kinds of things. And again, you might be looking at um, environmental factors, things which exist outside of the organisation, so legislation, for example. Okay, so you need to keep these things in mind because obviously your perspective should be from the point of view of design management. And these, thinking about this will help you focus your investigation. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do your research. So... Um, First of all, you will have established your object objectives and you will have planned for them. You need to keep these in mind when you start your research so that you don't go off on a tangent and start going down a path which actually isn't very productive and, and uses a lot of time. This research stage is very, very time intensive. It's labour intensive. It uses up a lot of that very precious resource that you have. So, obviously, the first place I would start would be with a literature, uh, literature review. What's already been done? Okay? Has this kind of research already been done? If so, read it. <laughs> Don't try and conduct something um, again. If the literature is there, use it. Use it to inform your research. And, of course, that exists in lots of different forms. Books, journals, articles, white papers, um, non-government bodies, websites, and, of course, radio and television. All different sources of information, okay? And they're all as valid as each other, with the possible exception of Wikipedia. But you can start there, you know. There's no reason why you can't start from Wikipedia. You just don't finish there. Um, and then, of course, you need to keep in mind your audit style or the framework which you're going to be using. You need to keep on thinking about the scope of your investigation and also the methodology you're going to use, the process you're going to use to conduct this particular investigation. 
And then at the end, you need to think about uh, whether or not you can actually test the question. You need to investigate this. How can you test it? Why would you test it? Okay? So that's your research uh, main pointers. And then moving on, there are some important details that you mustn't forget throughout the course of this particular um, assignment. Okay, so very important details, such as what are you going to do and what are you not going to do? And I want you to keep this in mind. Okay? The scope of the project is very important because we're not trying to address everything and all the issues, and you can't do that, certainly not within the time that you've got and all the word count that you've got. So it's very important that you remember the limitations of your investigation, okay, as well as the possibilities. The action stage of your investigation, so this is the doing bit that you should be in the middle of now. Um, so what methods are you going to use to carry out this investigation or this audit? What's your methodology? Are you using an existing framework or are you using your own framework? And if you're using your own framework, then outline that in the beginning stages of your uh, written uh, report. Okay? Let us know how you're going to do this. And then, if you are conducting any primary research, you need to think about how you're going to collect this data, what criteria you will use to determine whether or not um, it's been successful, what's the level of achievement. So are you going to use numerical scoring, are you going to use a um, poor, good, adequate, that kind of um, response. And remember, when you are conducting primary research, is it actually worth doing? Can you get enough information out of that research to make it worthwhile? Because okay, there's no point doing a questionnaire if when you've finished that very lengthy and difficult project, uh, process, you haven't actually got information that you can use. Okay? So it's very, very important. If you are going to conduct this primary research, make sure it's worth it. Make sure it's well designed. Because if somebody's already done something similar and they already have that research, there's no point doing it again. Okay? So if the information is there, use it. And then finally, thinking about your results. You go back to the beginning and think about what your predictions were for that, this particular project, this particular investigation. What outcome is expected from the process and how will it be evaluated? These are things that you've put in place at the very beginning of this project. So you're going to need to reflect on the objectives. You're going to need to evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of this investigation, both in terms of the question you've set yourself and the process which you've used to get to the end. Okay? And then, of course, you're going to have your conclusion and your recommendations, which is very, very important. This is one of the key stages of the audit or the investigation. This is really where the points are. Okay, so make sure you spend a good, lot, a good lot, lot of time concentrating on this section. It needs to be good. Okay? So, very importantly, uh, this is a really difficult task. Okay? It's going to take lots of time and it's going to take lots of effort. We're quite far in at this point, but please make sure that you're actually interested in your subject because you've got to do it for a long time. You know, you've got another, what, seven weeks of this, six weeks of this. So make sure it's something that you're genuinely interested in and you care about because otherwise you're going to struggle towards the end of this project. Okay? If it isn't something you're genuinely interested in, then think now very carefully, how could I slightly change the direction of this project so that I'm genuinely motivated to do it? Okay? That's it. That's everything that I wanted to talk to you about now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this on screen for you and I'm going to uh, leave the video camera on for a little bit longer. I want you to all talk about um, the things I've just spoken about, anything that you're worried about. I'll be back in five, ten minutes, and then we'll do your individual um, presentations. Okay? Right. I'm going to go and leave you to it. Can't talk. Freedom. Freedom.